Good morning. I welcome you to worship this morning. I invite you to join me in an opening prayer. Good and gracious God, we come today to worship you, to be the living sacrifices that we are, to be living worship. We thank you for the forgiveness that you have given us, and we respond in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I invite you to please stand as you are able. We will begin with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promises of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Please take a moment of silent reflection. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's body, God's love, has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that is given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for our sins while we were yet sinners. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please take this moment to share a sign of peace with one another.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. There will not be a special music this morning, and so I invite our reader to come forward. Our first reading is from the 51st chapter of Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. 
I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live in it on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. Our second reading is from the 12th chapter of Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. 
He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the second reading, which was from Romans. And Paul said that we're all one body, and there's many parts, and they're all important, even though they're all very different. And that he was talking about the church and how we're all different. We all got different personalities, but we all have a part in all of this. And I was thinking of a way to picture that and uh well a couple examples you ever build with legos right and you know one lego isn't so i mean it's fun you could two is more fun to build an actual castle or something really cool um is even more fun and each part has needs to be there needs to be part of it it's all important even the littlest tiny little tiny Lego piece that goes in and, and uh, puts a, makes it a door or something. That's important. Um, same with puzzle pieces. You need all the puzzle pieces to make it fit. And I was thinking of these stained glass windows, you know. Each one's a different color. Each piece of glass is important. And if they were all the same, it'd just be a regular old window, right? But because each one's unique and different, and has its part in that window. You have a beautiful window and the light comes through and um, makes this beautiful piece of art. And so basically, we all have part. We're all part of the full picture and important in God's eyes, even when you don't always feel like you are, like, oh, so-and-so is more talented or so-and-so is better at this. Well, that might be, but you have your own gifts that God gave you, and that's special to you, and you're loved for it. Let's pray. You repeat after me. Dear God, we know we are important in your eyes. Show us how to live out our unique abilities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Have a seat. Well, I want to start out this morning talking about a scientist. In the 17th century, Blaise Pascal was a French mathematician, physicist, inventor, writer, and Christian philosopher. Along with Galileo, Kepler, and Newton, he was one of the founders of modern physics. He's best known for the laws of hydraulic pressure. And he even has a mathematical theorem named after him. Later in his life, he began to focus in more on questions of faith and philosophy and the study of religion. 
And one of the observations that he made about human beings in our relationship with God is that there is a God-shaped hole in every heart that only God can fill. That idea traces further back to St. Augustine, who said of our relationship with God this, You stir man to take pleasure in praising you because you have made us for yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Pascal wrote on his idea of the God-shaped hole by saying this, what else does this craving and this helplessness proclaim that there was once in man a true happiness, of which all that now remains is an empty print and trace? This he tries in vain to fill with everything around him, seeking in things that are not there, the help he cannot find in those who are, though none can help since this infinite abyss can be filled only by the infinite and immutable object, in other words, by God himself. Does this search for something, something to fill us, strike a chord with any of you? Maybe you've experienced a nagging sense that something's unfinished, that there's an emptiness in your soul. We tend to feel to see the sacredness in the ordinary things and want more. We try to fill our sense of emptiness with objects, with anything we can reach and grab instantly. So we try to fill it with food, or money, or power, or children, and marriage, or getting a buff body, or drugs, or alcohol, or sex, whatever's at hand we pursue. And for some reason there is this thought that if we can just get that one thing, fill it with that one thing, we will escape our sorrows, that everything will be okay, we'll be safe, we'll finally have that peace and happiness that we long for, and we fail to see the sacredness that lives in ourselves. The desire for God is present even when we don't know what to call it. We are restless until we rest in God. This space, God fills it. Yet we mistakenly try to fill the space ourselves with the stuff that never quite satisfies. And our pursuit of God can also become an unsatisfying experience as well. For when we make God the object to fill up on and get happy on, we lose track and are not filled either. That doesn't make sense, but it does. Give it a moment. See, I like the idea of this God-shaped space, the desire for God, that there's a place that's imprinted, that God fits and stirs within me that my restlessness will find rest, that that is a promise. But there is a problem with this theory, and the problem is the pursuit. Because when we are in pursuit of happiness, of safety, of perfection, of being filled up with our desired objects, whatever they are, the great job, the family, the marriage, the money, the buff body, the cars, the stuff. If only, when I get this, then. When I have this, then. When I get my religion right, then. We get discouraged because when we acquire what we pursued, we aren't filled up the way we thought we would be. So in the case of God, 
when we get caught up in the pursuit of God, it can sound like this. When I pray, I feel like words are just bouncing off the walls into an empty vacuum. I can't feel God with me. I feel so alone. Why is God silent when I need him? I feel depressed. I'm filled with anxiety. And Jesus said, don't worry, but I worry all the time. Why haven't I felt the comfort of knowing God? So I thought if I became a better Christian, read my Bible, went to church, prayed my prayers, served people, I'd feel happy all the time. But I don't. What is wrong with me? Is my God-shaped hole damaged? Does God not want to fill me up? The problem is our pursuit to fill up the empty spaces. For it treats God like a vending machine of happiness. And God is not a vending machine for happiness. The wholeness and fullness of God that God brings that is spoken of repeatedly within Scripture is a way of paradox. Listen to some of this. You may recall some of these Scriptures that this is reflecting upon. Lose yourself and be found. Empty yourself and be filled. Give your old life away and discover new life and love in abundance. Surrender the pursuit of happiness and receive fulfillment. Fulfillment. That is the ability to lay down the pursuit. To lay down the pursuit of the object of your desire and actually open yourselves and allow yourselves to receive God's desire for you, to allow that to enfold you in God's grace. In Romans 12, Paul speaks of being transformed by the renewing of our minds. This transformation is not something that we can pursue or make happen. We can't. We are changed into a new creation by the power of Jesus. And Paul calls for a new way of thinking. And that takes into account others and not just our own self-focused personal needs and self-fulfillment When we are transformed and our minds are renewed, we have a change of thinking. We change our focus from me to we. That we are one body. That all parts, all the me's, are important and have a purpose. And that greater purpose is together. An important part of understanding Romans 12 is that it is truly the culmination of the first 11 chapters. They have been leading to this moment, this finale, for it really is. The rest of the chapters are just some details explaining Romans 12. This is the finale of his letter. And very important word begins it, therefore. Because therefore is part of an if-then statement, because, therefore. So chapters 1 through 11 are the because statements. And they sound like this. Because you have sinned and are sinners, Romans chapters 1 through 3, Jesus Christ revealed you are not defined by that sin, chapter 3. You have done nothing to earn God's grace. Chapter 4. Yet you are given 
God's Grace and Forgiveness and Reconciliation, Chapter 5. You are called to joyfully respond to God's grace that's been given to you that you did not earn through a dedicated life of love, Chapter 6. Nothing you or anyone or anything can separate you from the love of God. Chapter 8. And God's promises are forever and for all people. Chapters 9 through 11. Therefore, therefore, because of all this, therefore, present yourselves. Present your bodies. Not your minds, not your spirit, your whole bodies, embodied as a living sacrifice. This is your spiritual worship. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, what is acceptable, and what is mature. The scripture this morning said perfect, but what it means is what is mature? What is a mature way of living and being and discerning in life? So we be engaged in the world. You are a gift of God. Worship is not an activity that you do or get done, but a way of being, a way of living in relationship with a community and with God. An embodied action of our relationship. When we worship each week at church, we are reorienting ourselves, being brought back to the way of Christ, and this is done through community. And God's space within, that is within us, is united in body and spirit, for worship is an embodied experience. So God's space in us is intended to transform us into inspired beings. And inspiration to be inspirited is to be filled with the Spirit. And the Spirit is always changing and always moving and always evolving and always transforming. And that means the church is not an institution. Because institutions are defined by being, by being driven to be sustainable and survival. To, they're driven by sustainability and survival. Those aren't the focuses of the church. They really aren't. Sustainability and survival is not the focus of the church. The church is not an institution. It is people, people who are inspired, who are transformed and being transformed, who are living sacrifices in living active relationship with one another and with God. And if this is not your experience of church, then it's time for a change of mind, to make a change, to not be conformed but transformed by the renewing of your minds, the inspiriting of your bodies, the spiritual worship that is good and acceptable and mature. The desire of our hearts is to be filled with God, that God fills the God space within us, the imprint of God that has been laid since the beginning of our creation, to find rest in our restlessness, and it is all about worship. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds to be a countercultural community of forgiveness and love that you are meant to be. Become people of hope in times of doubt. Who trust in moments of crisis. Who care in a culture of apathy. God's space is in us so we may not be conformed but be transformed. So we may be renewed even when we don't 
feel fulfilled. You don't have to chase after God or the things that you think will make you happy or stress out because you don't have what other people have or feel, experience life the way other people are feeling and experiencing life or to somehow match up on the faith competitive faith meter or at least have as charming a Facebook page as your neighbors do. You don't have to do that. We each have our gifts, our part in the greater body of Christ and the rest for our restlessness that we seek comes in letting go of the pursuit. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, who are exhausted, exhausted with proving yourselves and improving yourselves. We will find rest in our souls, for that is why we desire that space, that restlessness to be filled and at peace. The God-shaped space inside us is not for us to work to fill, but for us to surrender to, to be transformed and renewed by God. Because you have sinned. You are not defined by that sin. You have done nothing to earn God's grace. You are given God's grace, forgiveness, and reconciliation anyway. You are called to joyfully respond to this gift of grace with a responsible life of love. And nothing can separate you from God's love, which is forever and for all people. Therefore, present your heart. Lay down your pursuit and come to Jesus. Be transformed into a new way of being. You are living spiritual worship. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our rock, provide a strong foundation for your church on earth. Unite it in joyful praise, service, and mission. Lord, in your mercy. You make deserts into gardens and the wilderness into Eden. Restore the clean and pleasant beauty of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. You shine the light of justice on the nations. Deliver us quickly from evil. Protect the defenseless and bring peace to warring lands. Lord, in your mercy. You renew our minds and transform our bodies. Wait with all who seek a cure or long for relief from chronic pain. Bring comfort and healing to all who suffer illness in spirit, mind, or body, especially Rose and David Boswell, Chris Snyder, and Tanner Grant. Hear our prayer. You give gifts to all, build up this assembly, increase our generosity, compassion, and cheerfulness. Lift up from among us prophets, ministers, teachers, and diligent leaders. Lord, in your mercy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the family and friends of James Allwart, who has returned from service. Lord, in your mercy. Your salvation lasts forever. Console us here on earth until we join all who praise you without end. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the mercy of Christ Jesus. You may be seated for the offering.
merciful God, you open your hand, you satisfy the need of every man. You have set this peace before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take, drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated at this time. The meal is prepared and all are welcome to share in this table of forgiveness. You will, the ushers will let you know when to come forward. You may stand or kneel along the railing. You'll receive the bread and then a cup of either dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice. And if you need gluten-free elements, let the servers know. If you need us to bring the elements to you, let the ushers know. Come, let us eat.
Please stand as you are able and receive the communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. You may be seated. Announcements this week. You may note the messenger has uh, most of the events going on. If you are doing the baby bottle boomerang that ends today, so drop off your bottles that were filled with coins. Um, it's along the wall over here in Mission Hall. And uh, there is, among things going on, new members. We had new members um, join this weekend. There are five new members. Four joined the last night's worship service, and we have one joining the 11 a.m. service. So we welcome them, and uh, you'll notice some address changes in your uh, messenger. And I'll invite Chris to come forward. soon for me to do a whole bunch of stuff, I shifted it to September 16th, which is Saturday, after the Saturday, after Labor Day. God's Work Our Hands is a neighborhood cleanup thing. Seminole Holland neighborhood. Okay, we put out cards and we say, bring your household goods and your yard waste and all that sort of stuff. And we put some dumpsters out here and stuff like this. Okay? Now, theoretically, everybody's supposed to bring their own stuff. Now, some people say, well, can I do that? And can I do that? So, I need some help. 
from those of you who can throw stuff in the dumpsters or help somebody take their trailer or pickup truck over to a house and pick up a load of limbs or whatever, yard waste, okay? So, I got these two clipboards. The red and green nothing mean nothing special, so don't let that worry you, okay? They're both the same thing. Put your name down and your phone number if you got a pickup truck or a, or a uh, uh, trailer that we can borrow, use, beg, steal, whatever. Let us know. Saturday, September 16th from 9 to noon. It's not horrible, okay? Thank you. I invite you to please stand and receive the blessing. Now may the power of God strengthen you. May the love of Jesus Christ heal you. And may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we go in peace, serve the Lord.